Good evening and welcome to Sunderland for our special show, Brexit Crisis, Deal or No Deal. Well, tonight, with just 58 days to go until Brexit and less than 24 hours since those Commons votes last night, we're going to find out what people in this city think of it all. Well, let's cast our minds back to the referendum, remind ourselves how Sunderland voted. And, of course, they voted to leave by a massive majority. The most of the North East actually also voted to leave, apart from Newcastle. But in Sunderland, 61.3% wanted out of the European Union. Just 38.7% of people here voted to remain. And that left the Leavers winning by 30,000 votes. Well, tonight, here in the room, it's a politician-free zone. We're going to be hearing from a florist, from an engineer, a firefighter, uh, a taxi driver, a former nurse, and also people who are retired and some students as well. And during the next hour, they're going to be voting on some of the key issues that are facing the nation at the moment, the key Brexit questions, and we're going to compare the results from here in the room with a National Sky data poll that we've carried out. So, let's get in the mood. Let's just do a quick show of hands. Hands up everybody in the room who voted to leave the EU at the referendum. There we go. So that's half of the audience. Keep your hands up if you still feel the same. You would still vote leave now. Everybody? Great. Uh, what about the Remainers? Hands up those who voted remain. And has anybody changed their mind? No? Seb? You, you have changed your mind. Put your hand down. <laughs> We're going to talk to Seb in a minute because he's one of those who has changed his mind. Not many have, though, I have to say. Uh, pretty entrenched views here. Well, Sunderland is just 10 miles down the coast from Newcastle and it shares much of its history, shipbuilding, coal mining and brewing. The big Vorks brewery was just down the road. They were all big employers here. They've now all gone, uh, but have been replaced by car building. The Nissan factory just up the road has been here for around 30 years now and employs 7,000 people. Well, tonight we're in the bonded warehouse, which is down on the Fish Quay, where they used to make some of those chains and anchors for those ships. It's now been turned into a bar. Lots of gentrification happening in a lot of these urban areas. Well, our people and politics correspondent Nick Martin has been out and about in the city today to find out what people feel about Brexit and Sunderland two years on. Welcome to Sunderland, famous for shipbuilding, football of course, and for being the first part of Britain to emphatically declare its support for Brexit. When the shipyards closed 30 years ago, the car makers moved in. A billion pounds of inward investment in the last five years has come from Europe. But not everyone's benefited. Austerity has hit people hard, so Sunderland opted out. I voted leave because I thought that might have been better for the, the trade that I'm in, the fruit and vegetable trade. I'm apprehensive, but I wish they would get something sorted out because it's been a long time. Because I think we're letting too many people in and it's, the country's becoming crowded. I think the Prime Minister should go ahead with a second referendum just because back when the first referendum happened there wasn't enough information. I think people were just voting on hearsay and so I do regret my decision. Hand on heart, truthfully, I'm confused by the whole thing. You speak to like my rug manufacturer who isn't buying rugs in at the moment until he sees how things go. Carpet manufacturers not buying into carpets just looks like organised chaos. Well, I, I think the people of Sunderland don't really care about Brexit anymore. They're just worried about where the next paycheck's going to come from, to be honest. People are still looking for work, you know, and the, the high streets are empty. It's been three years this year, and they're still... All they're doing is squabbling and fighting. I just know it's a massive mess. And it's the same way I feel like back in 2016, where just, like, in, out, in, out. You know, you've got half your family and friends saying that we should stay in and if Brexit would be a massive disaster. And then you've got the other half of your friends and family, you'll go, no, we need to leave. I think she's going to have to begrudgingly put this back to the people. Sunderland, like everywhere else, waits to see how the Brexit story ends. Nick Martin, Sky News, Sunderland. 
Now, if you don't know your Irish backstop from your Brady Amendment, fear not, we have an expert on hand, a Brexpert, if you will. Mm. It's Professor Tom Brooks, who's at Durham University, Professor of Law. Uh, were you at all surprised that Sunderland was so steadfastly leave? Uh, no, I wasn't. Um, or that, too, that surprised uh, about the region. Um, there's a lot of... Um, uh, austerity has hit the region hard. The economy has not been uh, as strong as other parts of, of the UK. And I think uh, there's a lot of factors for, behind people wanting uh, change and improvement, whether they were for remain or whether they were for leave. So not that surprised. Mm. We're going to be hearing fr from some of those people um, mm. over, over the next hour. Do you think a lot of the voting was political? Do you think people voted with the political parties or do you think this was something that people separated, they separated which party they supported from what they felt about Brexit? I think the, the post-referendum evidence is that uh, parties mattered less uh, with this. This was a different uh, type of, of result. People were um, uh, almost strangely uh, really kind of attached themselves to the EU issue. Remember that before the referendum was called, most people, one in f only one in five, thought the EU was a big issue. Most people thought other things were big. Employment, housing, education, other NHS, other issues, not the EU. But yet things changed a lot there, and I think it did transcend parties, transcended parties. Okay, Tom, thanks very much for now. Uh, let's get some of those views. Let's come over to the sofa area that we've got here. Uh, we've got Paula, who's sat there in the corner, our first victim tonight. Uh, Paula, um, <laughs> you are a comedian. Obviously, this is no laughing matter, Brexit. No. Why did you vote to leave? Um, I voted to leave because, um, well, in the history of civilizations, it's never been a good idea to hand over power to, you know, a distant oligarchy with the power to levy you know, arbitrary taxes across national borders. But what about the jobs here? You know, the, the, there's been a lot of EU investment. You've got the, the Nissan plant, which there are other Nissan plants in Europe. Yeah. You know, we're not worried that they could think about shutting that and taking those jobs elsewhere. Well, I think people are thinking primarily about their own domestic situations. I think that's how people vote anyway. And I think uh, expecting people to kind of vote as a region, as a sex, as a gender, as, as anything like that is, is a mistake. People are always going to vote, going to look around at their immediate environments and, and are going to vote based on their own circumstances. OK, Julia Potts on the surface as well, but from the other side, a Remainer. Um, what are your feelings about the impact on this region? Because you used to work at Nissan and you still work in, in the technology and manufacturing industry. Uh, so I'm really passionate about um, what's best for, the, for this region and for Sunderland uh, in particular. And, uh, and I've worked in manufacturing in the northeast for, the, for more than 30 years. And the, the four companies that I've worked for, the, the, none of them have been UK-based companies. And, uh, and, and all of them, without doubt, would not be here if we were not in the EU. So I do worry about what, what happens in the future. Do you not think the, the, the northeast can hold its own if, if it leaves? It's strong enough now. Uh, I don't it's think so because 50% of the exports from the uh, from the northeast go to the EU, and we've got the best deal with the EU now. Um, you know, in, in the current situation, being in the EU, than we would with either either May's deal or, or leaving without a deal. Uh, I, I don't think we can do any better than that. Okay, uh, Chris, you feel the opposite. Uh, you voted to leave. Why did you want out? I think forgetting all the rhetoric. <coughs> about the lies told in the campaigns or the exaggerations of, you know, the world will end if we vote to leave. I think people voted because they did want those principles of just bringing back control to the UK. I feel there's 27 countries who gradually, as the EU's expanded, we've had less and less influence. I think most of them, for one reason or another, don't really support the UK. And I just think, you know, we made this country great by trading around the world and we were just getting more and more restricted by it. Is there anything in your life in particular that you felt the EU had done that, that really impacted on your life personally? No, because, to be fair, you know, what Paula said about people looked at their immediate environment. For me, I looked at the wider picture. I always believe that people struggle with austerity more at the lower end and I think should be supported more and I just think we need to create better terms, better trading. If we want to get back to where we were as a world leader and a world economy then I think we've got to do it ourselves. I think we'd be just totally restricted in the EU. So it was more principle than anything personal. It was just 
how I felt about it. Paul, you're nodding along there. I mean, obviously, it's an issue that's divided the country, it's divided Sunderland, it's divided families as well, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> you're here as a lever. On this table over here, let's go and talk to Alexa. I'm going to go around this way, Alexa. Um, Alexa, how do you know that man? That's my dad. That's your dad. So, <laughs> had very heated household debates yes, recently. I in imagine house, it was fun so. over Christmas. Yeah, really fun. My mum won't even disclose how she voted because it's that debate. So why do you house. why do you feel so strongly about remaining? I did initially just I was sort of I thought both campaigns weren't very well handled and I just more thought I wanted to stick with what we had potentially with Cameron going back to maybe renegotiate as he was at the time back in 2016, maybe get a bit of a better deal than he had at the time. But I think both campaigns were just badly handled and I wasn't particularly influenced either way. So I was like, stick with what I know. And you've oh. not been able to persuade your dad and he's no. not been able to persuade <laughs> you. Do you think it'll ever change or do you think you'll always be diametrically opposed on this? Um, no, I think, I think Alexa will finally realise <laughs> 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 You'll see the light. Alexa, thanks very much. Now, in our opening vote, we asked if anyone had changed their mind. Now, Seb, you did tell us earlier that you changed your mind. I just want to check that you still, that you still have. I don't want to misrepresent right. you, but you apparently voted Remain and you now support Leave. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Why, why is that? Why did you change your mind? Uh, many reasons. I think that having a look, look into it further, um, I think that... Well, one, the handling of it, I wasn't. I just think it's been handled just despicably. It's, it's incompetent the way it's been handled. Going on to the way that um, the scaremongering, if we leave, this is going to happen, you know, the death knell is going to happen, you know, everything's going to fall in on Britain. Where the facts are, we, I mean, we've got a strong export, we've got, we import a lot from Europe and they rely on the imports. So I think that's. But we rely on them a lot too, don't we? You know, we rely on them as a market and we rely on them for imports. We do, yeah, we do as well. But they rely on us, for instance, the car market's the biggest in Europe. But we re they're relying on, um, we, I mean, you've got Volkswagen, you've got BMW, Ford, and even Ford now went across to Europe with European money, took uh, the work away from Britain. And I think that to bring the work back to Britain, these companies pro will probably have to open places here to stop You're not worried that it'll do, do the opposite, that, 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 that those big companies will go, well, we'll just stay in Europe and not, not be in the UK whatsoever? I don't believe it will. I think that for Nissan, for instance, uh, the, it is the most productive plant in the world because of where it is. It's the work ethic of the, the, of the North East and that's, that's what's made it so great. It's better than the plants in America. It's better than the plants in Europe. And I think that this is a, it, it's a strong point. It's a strong selling point for the North East in particular. And I think that the work will come back into the UK. OK, Seb, thanks very much. Uh, let's move up to the back of the room. Let's talk to Louise up here. Louise, you are a Remainer. You're a speech and language therapist. Why were you a Remainer? There's just many, many reasons. I mean, um, if you look into what um, the EU has funded in the North East, including in Sunderland, it is just vast. And maybe the mistake is that it's not being widely publicised. I've discovered things that were funded by the EU that I didn't know about. Like what? Um, there's the Port of Sunderland, if we're talking about business over there, the, um, the Software Centre, Washington oh. Business Centre. It just The list goes on and on, um, including walk-in centres that we were talking about earlier. And does anyone really think in this room that a Tory government is going to replace that money into the North? I mean, come on, get real. Um, we're going to be... We are going to be um, in chaos after this. We get twice as much per head up here than the rest of the country. You're, you're being very quiet, but does anyone agree with that? Does anyone think, fear that you may get lost by, by London? You're, you're looking uh, a I'm little bit so like you sure. don't, David. Well, you're a business consultant. Yeah, well, I, I just think that, you know, there's a diversity of this. That we, we've seen elements of, for example, business on benefits uh, with business support schemes coming out of the, 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 the European Council. Yes, there is an issue for this government. There is a, I completely agree that what we're seeing is a polarity that's occurred in the population that's representative of a debate far wider than just being in or being out of Europe. It's, it's reflecting the marginalisation of communities right around the country. It's reflecting a London-centric society that, frankly, doesn't get 
areas like the North East. Mm -hmm. We just need to look at HS2 stopping at Leeds. We just need to look at how business associations organise themselves around a notion of the North East being something that includes Yorkshire, something that includes uh, something f further down the road than local people identify with. And, and so I think there's a debate for really all government administrations, for Europe, for, for our own government, for, for parties of all colour, to actually start to see areas uh, outside of uh, this London-centric, uh, London and the home counties focused society and, and look at the fair shares. If we look at Scotland, the Barnet formula, I issues like that, uh, they're all hot topics up here because frankly the per capita spend up here is not equivalent to what happens to the south. You can have the same debate in Devon and Cornwall. Indeed. Well, that's one of the reasons we're here tonight and to get the views of this room tonight. So it is time to put your fingers on your buzzers. Um, we're going to ask you a question. This is our first vote of the night, so get ready. I'll vote at the end. Uh, we're going to ask whether or not you rather have a deal or no deal and what kind of deal. So wait until the end and then I'll tell you. It's one if you'd prefer Theresa May's deal with the backstop, two if you want it without the backstop, and three, if you'd rather have no deal at all. Press your buzzers and we'll bring you the answers after the break and also the results of a national poll that we've carried out today here on Sky. Stay with us. <laughs> 